You gotta be talking to people about this stuff. And if you're not convinced about it, get convinced or get out. Guys, so <laughs> I'm losing my this mind. is what I wanna share with you guys, okay? This is a breakdown of new construction units completed, okay? The middle line represents the average since I believe it was 1990, okay? Represents average number of homes, okay? What do you guys see? Just call it out, what do you see? Well, we've been below average since what, 05, 06, 07? Yeah, we've been below average since about 2007. So you remember what Barry Habib talked about, right? We had a run in new construction homes being built, right? And, and it didn't account for what year? What year didn't it account for in terms of new households formed? I'll give you a hint, 1973. What happened in 1973? Abortion, Abortion was enacted. So then there was a massive drop in new household forms formed that at age 33, which is the typical age that someone is going to buy a house for the first time, it was like we had a run up, uh, we had a run up, run up, run up, run up of households, and then a massive drop that hit right in 2007, 2008, on top of the banking crisis and all of that. But look, you're going to see this: the more time you spend paying attention to the economy and anticipating the road ahead, right? Do we always have ups and downs? Always. In fact, statistically, it's about every seven or eight years. So here's what happened. We had too much inventory here and then a massive overcorrection as builders, small builders, general contractors got out of the business, right? And then now, since about 2011, 2012, we've struggled to catch back up. But is this deficit or this delta greater than the over built era right here? Yes or no? So let's compare that to how much the average household has grown since also, or how many households, additional households in the United States since 2000, uh, or since 1990. Has it gone consistently up or has it gone down? It's gone consistently up. So this is the thing that we're talk that's, that's happening right now. Are we face facing greater inflation, yes or no? Yeah, we're, we're an inflation problem, if you will, right? Are interest rates high, yes or no? Bullshit. Interest rates are at their 40-year average right now. Again, guys, we got, we got used to artificial inflation rates, I'm sorry, artificial interest rates in the two or threes. We'll likely not see that in our lifetime again, certainly not in the twos. Now, the reason the Fed brought up the rates so quickly, right? It's the fastest that the Fed has ever brought up rates in history. You know why they did that? Everyone in this room should have an answer for that. Every single one. If you don't, get on chat GPT, start studying the economy. The reason that the Fed brought up interest rates so high is that the only tool that they have to jumpstart an economy that's in a recessionary period is to do what? What have they done seven out of the last uh, eight recessions? They dropped interest rates. When the interest rates were at two or three percent, what do they drop it to? They're already at zero. The Fed rate is already at zero. Does that, does that track? So everything that has happened, if you understand the economy, if you under, understand history, and if you watch the patterns, was you knew was gonna happen. That's why for Cambria and I, we're still looking at properties, mm -hmm. right? Do you and guys remember <laughs> what interest rates were before COVID hit? No, they weren't five or six, but they were, they were getting up there, right? They were, they were getting, up. they were inching up. The plan had been before COVID to actually get them back up to the fives and sixes. That had been the Fed's plan. And then COVID happened and they just froze, right? They were like, it's okay, we're gonna give you guys a bunch of money and we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop interest rates really, really low. And then everybody was sitting at home and they were like, oh, let's just buy stuff. And so that's why everything went out of stock. That's why you couldn't get an RV, you couldn't get a boat, you couldn't get jet skis, you couldn't get anything because basically they were giving you that with free money. 
right? They were saying, we're not going to charge you anything and you can get as much as you want. And then everybody went out of stock on everything. Now what's happening? Everybody has started to build back up their inventory. So now all these dealers are like, we have to be charging these guys money in order to level out everything, make everything level again. You're going to start seeing sales on RVs and boats and, and all of that. I'm already seeing it at Costco, right? All the food is starting to go on sale because everybody had built up their inventory way too much to supply an unreasonable demand. It's this, it's this overcompensation, right? And this is what the Fed does. They, they <laughs> needle with the economy, right? And then it starts in another direction. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they need to look. And so we're always gonna we're always gonna have these ups and downs. But guys, this is biblical. The Bible talks about seasons, right? You got seven uh, seven years of feast, and then you got seven years of famine. I mean, it's just a it's just a natural cycle, right? So, but the thing to be talking to buyers about right now is the advantage buyers have right now is a little bit, not here, a little bit of inventory. Just three months ago, it was 3.4 months of inventory. Just three months ago, right? So that window is closing. And we talked about that it would close, right? Also, did we, what, didn't we talk about when we had, the last time we had under one month inventory? What was the thing, we, what was the common complaint amongst realtors? Oh, we just have no inventory. Three months ago, we had inventory. So the problem isn't the inventory or the lack of inventory or interest rates or any of that. It's a lack of resourcefulness about talking to people about the advantages of home buying. That's the problem. Because buyers have a decision right now. And that decision is, do I find a home right now when there's more to pick from than there likely will be in three months? Or do I wait for interest rates to drop? They're going to drop. Interest rates are going to drop. Probably a full point, okay? Or do I wait for interest rates to drop, but now... I'm competing with eight other buyers. Tough choice. But you gotta be able to teach them how to control what they can control. They can't control inventory. What they can control right now while there is a little more inventory is you can have the seller buy down rate. You can find the house that you want because there's a little more, a little, just a little bit more inventory. You can find the house that you want and then refinance when rates come back down to a more favorable rate. But you're not gonna, you're not, look, look at those numbers. You're not going to be able to get that house for a steal. That's not happening. It's just not happening. You guys get that? You gotta be talking to people about this stuff. And if you're not convinced about it, get convinced or get out.